Hi everyone and welcome back to my HESI review. Today I'm covering grammar. I thought I would share with you one of the trickiest things for me on the grammar was actually the way that they asked their questions. So a lot of times they would just say which sentence is correct or which sentence is incorrect or fill in the blank with the correct word or which word was used incorrectly in the sentence below. It was more like that where you'd have to sort of actually figure out what they even wanted to test you on sometimes to figure out the answer. So that was kind of more the tricky part for me with the grammar and I tried to incorporate that a bit in this review. So which sentence is correct? Also you may want to pause the video after reading it so that you have a little bit more time to look at the answers. Alright so which sentence is correct? John plays piano good, Tina is good at math, she performed good in competition, or Mark knows Tyler very good. In this case, they're testing how you use the word good. The answer is, Tina is good at math. And the reason why is because we don't use an action verb followed by the word good. So we wouldn't say John plays good, we would say John plays well. We wouldn't say she performed good, we would say she performed well, etc. The next question is, what is the direct object in the sentence below? Mary kicked the soccer ball to Mark in the field. Which word is the direct object? The answer is the soccer ball. The direct object is usually what the person, um, it's usually a noun, first of all. It's a person, place, or thing. It's oftentimes a thing, and it's going to typically follow the action verb. So in this case, the action verb is kicked. So Mary kicked what? What did she kick? She kicked the soccer ball. And as a hint for the next question, um, the indirect object would be the receiver of the soccer ball. So if I were to say what is the indirect object here, which is not the next question, so I'll just answer that here, the indirect object would be Mark, because Mark is receiving the soccer ball, or that's who she kicked the soccer ball to, is Mark. So what is the indirect object in the next sentence? Mary gave her best friend Joy a private note after math class. So to answer this, you first have to find out what the direct object is. So Mary gave what? What did she give? She gave a note. So who did she give it to? Whoever she gave it to, or whatever she did with that note, is the indirect object. So in this case, she gave the note to her best friend, Joy. So Joy is the indirect object. Fill in the blank with the correct word. I wish I had blank, it was John's birthday, because I would have bought him a card, brought him a card. You don't even really need the second half of the sentence. I wish I had blank, it was John's birthday. I wish I had knew, I wish I had known, I wish I had no, or I wish I had knows. The answer is I wish I had known it was his birthday. Next, fill in the blank with the correct word. I filled the prescription in accordance blank the doctor's orders. Would it be in accordance to the doctor's orders, in accordance of the doctor's orders, in accordance with the doctor's orders or in accordance on the doctor's orders. It would be with, in accordance with the doctor's orders. Which sentence is grammatically correct? So I'm not going to read them all out loud because if anyone's not looking at the screen it won't make sense to them anyway, but if you're looking at the screen right now you can see each of these four sentences has one word which is the same in all four of them and that's the word north. So what they're really asking you here is which sentence uses the word north correctly? So what you need to know is in what case do we capitalize the word north? Because there are times where we capitalize it and there are times where we do not. So the answer to this one is my brother lives in the north. When we give someone directions and we say go north for 10 miles or go north for five minutes, we don't capitalize the word. If I say, I want to uh, ski the trails north of Aspen, that's still a directional uh, you know, use of the word. But when I say my brother lives in the north, I'm saying it's like a geographic place that he lives. It's like saying my brother lives in New York. I would capitalize New York if I said my brother lives in New York. 
So that's kind of a little tip to help you remember when to capitalize a direction. Which sentence is grammatically correct? The five women talked between themselves, talked among themselves, talked among they selves, or talked between they self? The answer is the five women talked among themselves. The reason why is because there are five women, so we use the word among. If there were only two women, we would use the word between and it would be letter A. But in this case, I've clarified that there are five women, that's more than two, so we're going to use the word among. And that was tested on my exam, so look out for that. Which sentence is grammatically correct? My chemistry teacher blank me if I had turned in my final lab report. When you get a question like this, I highly recommend you first, before you even look at the options, try to think about what you would put there and then see if what you would have put is one of your options. So my chemistry teacher never would have failed me if I had turned in my final lab report. The next question is, he went to the wedding, blank his hatred for formal tacky weddings. A very similar question to this one was on my test. So um, basically you're just trying to figure out which one sounds correct here. The answer is despite. Um, D is also pretty close. He went to the wedding in spite his hatred, but it would be in spite of his hatred. So we're missing the word of. Similarly, if this said he went to the wedding blank of his hatred, then you would have answer D be correct and B would be wrong. So sometimes it's just that one extra little word that you have to think, okay, that one's missing, so then the answer has to be despite. Which phrase is the dependent clause? This was on my test a couple times. While working at the shoe store, Jane's car was stolen. So the answer here is D, while working at the shoe store. Basically, what part of the sentence do you need kind of more information to really make sense of what's happening? While working at the shoe store, what ha well, what happened while she was there? Well, while she was there, her, her car was stolen. And Jane's car was stolen could be its own sentence, which makes that one the dependent, I'm sorry, which makes Jane's car was stolen the independent clause, and while working at the shoe store, the independent clause. Another question similar to this is which phrase is the independent clause? Now be careful because they did exactly that on my test. They asked their first question as which one is the dependent clause and then in the next question it was which phrase is the independent clause. So you really, really have to be careful that you first understood the question they were asking because it'd be really easy to think they were just asking for the dependent clause a second time, but they switched it on me. They said, which is the dependent? And then they said, which is the independent? So just make sure you double check what they're asking for. This sentence is, the store discounts items when sales are slow. The store discounts items when sales are slow. So think about what part of this sentence could be its own sentence, and we could just put a period somewhere in the sentence without the rest of the sentence. You can actually just read the options A, B, C, and D and say, okay, well, which one could be its own sentence? Discounts items cannot be its own sentence. When sales are slow cannot be its own sentence. Items when sales are slow cannot be its own sentence. But the, the store discounts items, that could be its own sentence. It's kind of um, short. It's, you know, the store discounts items. It's not really giving us a whole lot of information to work with, but it, it makes the most sense of all the rest of them about which one could be its own sentence. Which phrase is the dependent clause? So again, what are they asking for here? Now they're asking you to go back to dependent clause. So which part of the sentence cannot stand alone as its own sentence and depends on the rest of the information? I will leave the beach as soon as the sun goes down. The dependent clause would be as soon as the sun goes down. So you'll see a pattern there. The dependent clause usually starts with something like as soon as or when 
something something or after like there will be a transitional word or a phrase um, I notice as soon as is a pretty popular one okay so fill in the blank we went to the blank house for dinner so here they're asking you how to use a an apostrophe correctly when talking about um, something belonging to something else so like the possession of the house is it Jones with no apostrophe is it Jones with one apostrophe at the end is it Joneses or is it Joneses with a quotation mark this type of question did show up on my exam and the answer is B Jones apostrophe so when a word ends with an S you just put an apostrophe, an apostrophe after the S and there's no additional S after that. In the next question, Joe cleaned up his three blanks desks. So here they're testing you on how to use the apostrophe when there is more than one thing that has possession of the word desks. So I'll give you a hint. Joe cleaned up his coworker's desk would be if there was just one coworker. So it would be letter B if there was just one coworker and maybe this coworker actually has three desks but it's just one coworker. In this case, there are three coworkers and so Joe is cleaning up all three of their desks. The answer would be C. Again, it's like a plural, possessive kind of a situation. There are multiple coworkers that each have a desk, so we would use coworkers apostrophe. You wouldn't say coworkers is. The next question is before she blank accepted into nursing school, Gina blanked the HESI A2 exam. There were a couple of questions that were similar to this where you just kind of have to say, okay which words belong where in this sense. The answer is B. Before she was accepted into nursing school, Gina had taken the HESI A2 exam. The next question is, my best friend and blank saw a concert in the park. So this one, not this exact question, but one just like this showed up on my exam. You definitely are gonna see at least one question like this where they want to know, do you know when to use the word I or me after the word and? So in this one, it would be my best friend and I saw a concert in the park. The way you can figure this one out is just start the sentence with the word I or me and see which one makes sense. So you would not say me saw a concert in the park. You would say I saw a concert in the park. Actually, let me go back to this. So an example where you would use the word me would be something like, Kim gave the tickets to my best friend and me. You wouldn't say Kim gave the tickets to I. You would say Kim gave the tickets to me. So for the same reason, it would be Kim gave the tickets to my best friend and me. So that'd be an example of where you would use me. This is testing you on how to use who or whom in a sentence. So I'm not sure for blank this letter was intended. I basically already told you it's either B or C, so you're trying to figure out whether it's who or whom. The answer is C for whom. And the reason why is because we use the word whom after a preposition. So you do have to just generally know what your prepositions are. A lot of the times they are small words like for, to, of, those are prepositions, but there's a whole preposition song you can find on YouTube by Google, or by, you know, putting in the YouTube search, um, preposition song. Same skill is being tested here. Does anyone know blank wrote this letter? Would you say, does anyone know, does anyone know who wrote this letter? Or does anyone know whom wrote this letter? So basically you need to know, is the word know a preposition? 
It is not a preposition, so the answer is who. Does anyone know who wrote this letter? And one more. Does this ball belong to Mark? If not, to blank, does it belong? Would you say to who does it belong or to whom does it belong? Again, you have to know that the word to is a preposition, so the answer is C. If not, to whom does it belong? In the next question, which word is used incorrectly? Marie, an asthma sufferer, become short of breath after a jog and had to visit the ER. The answer is B, become. We would say Marie became short of breath after a jog. Which sentence is correct? And this is our last question. I would pause this screen here and just read them because um, I think it'll be helpful to give yourself an extra second and try to figure out what skill they're testing you on. This this is the kind of question that was tricky for me because I couldn't kind of couldn't figure out exactly what they were testing here and sometimes more than one sentence will sound correct. So first try to figure out if you know what they're testing you on. So what they're testing here and there were questions like this on my exam so make sure you understand what they're asking. What they're asking is, does the person, or the I should say the subject, does the subject that comes after the initial part of the sentence match up with the action in the first part of the sentence? So in this case, I'm gonna start with answer B. After giving a massage, sorry, after giving a massage, the patient felt more relaxed. Well, that should be after receiving a massage, the patient felt more relaxed because a patient doesn't give a massage if they're a physical therapy patient, right? They're receiving a massage. They're not giving it. They definitely probably did feel more relaxed, but they didn't give the massage. They received it. So B would be wrong. C, after passing the math exam, the teacher gave out prizes. Again, this might sound kind of correct, but... Does the teacher pass the math exam? No, the students pass the math exam. So you could say after grading the math exam, the teacher gave out prizes because the teacher would be the correct person to grade the math exam. But it's not the correct person to pass the math exam. And then D, after scoring the winning goal, the coach was excited. Well, he probably was, but he or she did not score the goal themselves because the coach is usually not playing. They're usually on the sidelines, right? The players score the goals, not the coach. So the only correct answer here is A, after giving an oral presentation, the speaker could finally relax because a speaker does give an oral presentation. The speaker is matching up with the action in the beginning part of the sentence. That was probably one of the more tricky types of questions for me personally, because I kind of sat there and had to really think about what they were trying to test me on. And the um, answers that they gave me as possibilities were like even trickier than these in my opinion. But yes, I did see this on the test and that was kind of tough for me. Um, I think it, I actually, I know that I got that question wrong. So <laughs> hopefully me reviewing it here will help you get it correct. If you have any questions about the examples I did, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and good luck on your HESI.